Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the famous physics example of a ball rolling off a table. So in other words, the setup looks like this, where I have some ball here, and it rolls off the table with some initial velocity, and then it follows this trajectory until it hits the ground here. And there's a bunch of questions I can ask, for instance, how long is it in the air? How far does it go? What's the velocity when it hits the ground? A bunch of questions I can ask. But one thing is true, no matter what the question is asking for, this is a classic projectile motion 2D kinematics question. And so we should start with a quick review of what I do for projectile motion or 2D kinematics, which is the same thing, because I do the same thing for every problem. First thing I do is I split it up in the x-axis and the y-axis. Doesn't matter which one I start with, but for the x-axis, since the acceleration is zero, there's only one equation we can use, and that is vx equals delta x over t, where that is specifically the x component of velocity. In other words, if you have a vector at an angle, let's say, then you always need to split it up in the x and y components. And then for the y-axis, I do kinematics, v initial, v final, acceleration, time, and displacement delta y, but I have to remember that these v initial and v finals are specifically the y-axis components, again bringing that back to right triangles and Sokotoa, and the acceleration will always be negative g or negative 9.8. And so then I like to fill in my variables and solve for whatever the question's asking for, but this is the setup. And of course, a lot of times I end up solving for time, even if the question doesn't ask for it, because time is the only variable that shows up in both the x-axis and the y-axis. So now let's start with our first example. I have two examples I want to look at today. For this first one, it's going to be all variables, because we love variables, right? So I have a ball rolling off this table with initial velocity, v naught. The height of this table is h. And for this first one, I just want you to tell me what is the distance from the table where it lands? In other words, how far does the ball go? And I want the answer in terms of v naught, h, g, and yeah, that's it. So to do this, the first thing I'm doing is I'm writing x-axis and y-axis. It doesn't matter which one you start with, but since the question's asking about distance, and that distance is clearly in the x-direction, I'll start with the x-axis, which is vx equals delta x over t. I want to solve for delta x, that's my distance. Vx, I do know, that's the initial v naught because that velocity points straight to the right, it is all x component. So in other words, v naught equals delta x, which I'm solving for, divided by time, and I don't know time right now. But like I mentioned a minute ago, we can find time by using the y-axis. So now I need to think about my five kinematic variables and see what we know and what we don't know. So V initial Y, for all of you saying V naught out there, you are incorrect. And the reason why is the Y component of velocity is the component pointing up or down. There is no velocity pointing up and down, which means it's zero. So V initial in the Y direction is zero. V final Y, a lot of people say that the velocity final is zero because the ball's not moving when it hits the ground, but that is a famous misconception. We do not know that speed because it's the speed that it's hitting the ground with, and there's no way right now we can know what that velocity is. So I'll just put question mark. Acceleration, I'm gonna write negative G. If you write negative 9.8, that is wrong because I want my answer in terms of G, no numbers for this problem. If it was numbers, then I would use negative 9.8. Time, I don't know, but I know that's what I'm solving for because I want to plug it in right there. And delta y is h because that's the height of the table. And of course, once again, you made another mistake. It is negative h because if you say positive h, you're saying the ball goes up height h. We're going down height h. So I need to put negative h right there. Or again, I'm going to get the wrong answer. And now I need to think about which kinematic equation I want to plug into to solve for time, and I need to choose the one that doesn't have v final in it. So we have to choose one of these four kinematic equations, 
And it turns out that the correct one is the second one because it's the only one that doesn't have V final. So we write delta Y equals V initial times time plus one half AT squared. Now it's easy, I just gotta fill in all my variables and I'll get this. Simplifying a step more, the zero T will just go away and that negative sign from the negative G can go out in front of my one half and there we go. Again, I'm solving for T. So in no particular order, I gotta get rid of the negative sign, the one half, the G, and the squared. First thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say the negative signs just cancel. If I wanna get rid of the one half, you can divide by one half, but I don't recommend doing that. Instead, I recommend multiplying both sides by two, because that cancels the one half, leaving me with GT squared. Now I will divide both sides by G. So 2H over G equals T squared. And then finally, take the square root. Remember, when I take the square root, it's technically plus or minus. But for this problem, you can't have a negative time. So we'll just keep the positive version, which is nice. So then here is the time of flight. The question didn't ask for the time of flight, but if it did, here's the answer. But more importantly, I need to plug in that time into Vx equals delta x over t. So then that means Vx, which we said was V0, equals delta x over root 2h over g, which is a complex fraction, but it's about to be not complex in a second, because if I want to solve for delta x, it means I'm multiplying the square root on both sides, giving me v naught times the square root of 2h over g. That is my delta x, my distance, and that is my final answer. As you can see, it's all the variables I wanted, v naught, h, and g, and even though it's all variables, this is my answer. And the beautiful thing about physics is you can now choose any velocity, any height, and any g you want, which it's 9.8 on Earth, but if you want to use the moon, that would be a different value of g. So for instance, if I said v naught was 10 meters per second, I said the height was 4 meters, and we say gravity is 9.8, because remember, g is a positive number. And I plug this in my calculator, then we'll get a distance of 9.04 meters, and that would be the distance for this example. So that's it for the first one. Now I just have one more for today. So once again, I have a ball rolling off a table, hitting the ground, but this time I'm gonna tell you the distance. I want this distance to be exactly one meter. The height of this table is gonna be 3.2 meters, and you're not gonna be solving for V naught, oh no, you're gonna be doing something much more difficult. This ball is going to be picking up speed from a ramp, a ramp that has an angle of 35 degrees. And your question is, you're gonna solve for the height H of this ramp. So this ball is picking up speed from the ramp. It's gonna have some speed V, which you're gonna to have to find first. And then with that speed, you're gonna make it one meter and 3.2 meters downward. One more technical thing I have to say about this problem. This ball is not rolling, it is sliding down the ramp without friction. The reason why that's important is because later on in the year, we talk about rotational kinetic energy and you discover that some of the energy is lost or really transferred to rotational kinetic energy. But all of that is way too confusing. So just do it the same way we did before, but with the addition of the ramp. So why don't you try on your own first, at least try and get that velocity, because that doesn't involve the ramp at all, just involves the 3.2 meters and the one meter. And then once you get that, we'll continue and deal with the ramp part. So pause the video, go ahead, give it a try, try and find velocity. Okay, so here we go. If you're wondering, can we just use that same equation we just came up with a minute ago, V naught root 2H over G equals delta X, the answer is yes, you can literally use that. But on the test, you might not have that equation given to you, and so let me explain how you would do this the normal way. Again, you would break up x-axis and y-axis. For the x-axis, we would say vx equals delta x over t. This time I'm solving for vx. That's gonna be the x component of velocity right here, straight to the right. Remember that vy is gonna be zero, because it's not going up or down. And we said delta x is one, but the problem is I still don't know t. So then I go to my y-axis, 
write out my five variables. Like I said a minute ago, v initial y is zero, v final y, we still don't know. Acceleration's gonna be, I'm gonna write negative 9.8 this time because it's all numbers. Once again, time is what I'm solving for, so I can plug it in right there. And delta y, we said it was 3.2 meters. And of course, now I'm gonna yell at you, how on earth could you forget this twice in a row? It's negative 3.2. The ball's going down 3.2 meters. We can't be making this mistake twice in a row. So yeah, yeah, I forgive you this time. But now we gotta plug into another kinematic equation. It ends up being the exact same one we just used because the setup is very much the same. So that means delta y equals v initial times time plus one half at squared. So negative 3.2 equals 0t plus 1 half negative 9.8t squared. Now with all the numbers, it turns out simplifying's a lot easier. The zero part goes away, and 1 half times negative 9.8 is negative 4.9t squared. At this point, I just have to divide both sides by negative 4.9. Let's plug that in a calculator. I will get 0.653 equals t squared. And then once again, we take the square root. So that means t equals the square root of that, which is 0 0.808 seconds. And then I just plug that into my x-axis equation. So vx equals delta x, which was one, divided by that time, 0 0.808. So then I just plug that in a calculator, and we'll get an initial velocity of 1.24 meters per second. So again, that's my velocity right here, 1.24 meters per second. I forgot to mention, we do start this from rest at the ramp, but now we need to find the height h. So now I'm just gonna redraw the picture so that we're just focusing on the ramp and how are we going to find this height? There's two ways you can do it. One way, using kinematics and forces, and another way, just using kinematics. Obviously the way just using kinematics is preferable, because I don't need forces. However, if you wanna use kinematics for this problem, you can, but you need to know that the acceleration, whenever you have a ramp involved, is always going to be g times the sine of theta, where theta is the angle of your ramp. If you didn't know that fact, then you have to know forces, which I cover in a different video, if you wanna check that out. But let's assume we know this acceleration is g sine theta, or g times sine 35. So that means 9.8, times the sine of 35, and that's gonna get us an acceleration of 5.62 meters per second squared. And now I can just use kinematics to solve for the height. Well, actually, technically, I need to find this distance first, because remember, when it comes to, in this case, 1D kinematics, not 2D, it's V initial, V final, acceleration, time, and displacement. V initial is zero because we said we started from rest. V final is the speed at the bottom of the ramp, which was the 1.24 meters per second from earlier. Acceleration we just found, 5.62. Time doesn't end up mattering because I wanna solve for delta x this time. Why? Because looking back at my triangle, once I find this distance, I can just think of it as a right triangle and use some Sokotoa to find h from there. So we need to find delta x, the distance. Which kinematic equation am I gonna plug into? The one that doesn't have time in it, which is the squared one. V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2a delta x. So that's 1.24 squared equals zero squared plus two times 5.62 delta x. Now it's just a matter of algebra. We'll get 1.53 for the left side. For the right side, 0 plus 2 times 5.62, which is 11.24 delta x. And then finally, just divide both sides by 11.24. And we'll get a distance of 0.136 meters, or if you like centimeters, 13.6 centimeters, because you just multiply by 100. But I'll keep it in meters, I don't care. Regardless, that's not the final answer, because remember, now I gotta go to my right triangle, this angle is still 35 degrees. We just found the hypotenuse to be 0.136. And now to find the height, it's either gonna be sine, cosine, or tangent. In this case, I want 
to choose the one that has the opposite leg and the hypotenuse, which is sine. So sine of 35 equals opposite h over hypotenuse 0.136. Multiply both sides by 0.136, and that will get us a final answer of 0 0.078 meters, or again in centimeters times 100, 7.8 centimeters for the ramp, depending on what the question's asking for. And so there we go, that's it. Hopefully that made sense. If not, you can post your questions in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.